on these two corners of Andrew Carnegie's invention. So we have make the most money in the top left corner, give it away in the bottom right corner. But they're on the same page for a reason. And the reason is they're actually related. They're actually the same thing in different forms. And so let me walk you through that. Here's how you read this landscape. It's got two axes to it. One axis is running top to bottom. And in that axis, we're just gonna talk about financial return. So if you're trained in how to do investing, if you have some money and you put it in the stock market or you're just trained by your parents to take your savings and put it in a savings account, right? That's a, that's a form of investing too. You're told that you wanna make the most money as possible from those investments. Make as much as you can without losing it, right? So at the top, we have maximal return. Well, in that framework, what is philanthropy? Just on that one axis, philanthropy is a negative 100% return. You are guaranteed to lose all your money if you give it away as a philanthropic grant, or right, as a donation. You will not get any money back and therefore it's negative 100%. It's kind of harsh. The philanthropists don't like to hear that because that sounds really bad, but as an investment, it's a terrible investment. So we have maximal to zero. Let's talk about the left-right axis because that one's more, much more interesting and, and more to our point here today. Uh, that's impact. So we'll start with philanthropy in this case. So the reason why you give your money as philanthropy and don't expect anything in return is because you want the most impact as possible. You want to give your money to a cause, uh, to an organization that, that solves a real problem. You want to tackle poverty and you do that with money. You want to tackle hunger or health and whatnot you hand over your money and they try and solve those problems in some significant way with the most amount of impact as possible. And then on the other side, on the left-hand side, there's less impact, but it's really not that you, you're trying to minimize your impact, is you just don't care. So when you pick a stock on Wall Street in the traditional manner, you just don't care what the impact is. That's just not one of the things that people looked at for, for the longest time, right? They're starting to look at it now but you know, most investors still don't. Most investors just look at what the return will be and what the risks are and, and these other factors. And uh, impact just doesn't play a role. So now we have, with those two axes, we have a nice simple landscape to talk about, right? One is return on investment and the other one is you know, impact on, invest on investment. And when you step back and think about it, well, impact investing is everything in between these two spaces or almost everything. We're going to leave that a little bit on the bottom. I'll explain that in a second. All right. So, in you know, it's it's not quite touching there. I just want to point out it's just barely getting to the corner, and it's just barely touching the bottom. So, as long as you get something back, it's an impact investment, and as long as you think about impact, it's an impact investment. And one of the reasons why it's so hard to describe what impact investing is, if you've not heard of it before, you got some new people in the room. It's because impact investing is a big thing. Impact investing is everything else on this page, except for the two corners. I can describe Wall Street investing in, in a sentence or two. I can describe philanthropy in a sentence. But impact investing would take me 10 minutes to describe in, in, in its full account. The reason that bottom left corner was kind of skipped is because that bottom left corner is purposely going to lose money and having no impact. Roll back for a second here. So. Here's the whole landscape, right? Less, less return on investment the further you go down and less impact the further you go left. And so it's really uh, you know, uncommon or it should never happen that someone purposely goes to lose money and doesn't want an impact at the same time. A lot of impact investments after the fact, we discover that they're in fact down here in the bottom left corner, but we didn't intend them to be there. So that's in red. We don't really want to go there and and we're going to skip that in terms of that graph. If we go to the bottom right corner, that's a really common corner to, um, to see uh, impact investors in. Uh, some of us will call that concessionary investing. Some will call that venture philanthropy. This is the idea that you want the most impact as possible, uh, but you would like some of your money back. And so that could be a, you know, it could be a recoverable grant where you just get your money back. Right? Whatever you gave them, they give you back. This could be something that's even lower than that. My friend runs a, a fund called Beneficial Returns, 
It's a for-profit fund. Uh, it does loans to businesses in the global south. And the fund that they launched last year, they guaranteed to investors that they would lose at least 2% of their money. At best, if all goes well, they'll lose 2% of their money. They raised a ton of money doing that. And they did that because their impacts are amazing. So the investors said, yes, I want to support you. Uh, I'll do that. Uh, we've seen other funds around that do affordable housing, dive into communities that just don't have access to money. And a lot of them are in that same range. They'll, they'll, they'll be happy to lose you 2 3 4%. The, or they might make you 2%, but after inflation, that's just going to get washed out anyway. So somewhere around that break-even mark. We see a whole lot of funds in there. Uh, and I have another friend who teaches this to philanthropists, uh, and they might wind up with a negative 8 or negative 10% return. And when you do the math of, uh, let's just say I want to donate money, right, which is negative 100, I want to donate some money to this organization I love, and maybe this, this organization is also doing some loans. They're borrowing some money. Okay, I'll give them some money there too. Well, if you actually did the math and, you, and you've computed your blended rate, you might actually be making negative 25, negative 30, negative 50%. And it's fine. As long as you like the impact and you're happy with that return, there's nothing wrong with that. And it will still give you more money back than you would have if you had just done philanthropy. So up here in the top right, we're trying to make the most money as possible while having the biggest impact as possible. So the, you know, the Nirvana investment is the top, absolute top right corner. You know, think of the middle of this graph as I just got my money back and I had a decent impact. So the middle's totally fine as well. And maybe it's just along the line. So I had an amazing impact and I got back, you know, maybe it's a teeny bit more, maybe I got back 10% more than I put in. But a bunch of us, uh, my friends run a global network of early stage and growth stage impact venture funds. That's called Capria. Uh, I run a global network of impact accelerators called Fledge. We're aiming to be as, as close to that upper right corner as we can. We want great impactful investments, investees, uh, and we wanna make money. We wanna make the, the commensurate amount for taking our risk. We wanna make you know two, three times our money back. Um, and there are a growing number of funds that are joining us in this corner. And then there's the upper left corner. And I'm throwing ABAN in there. That's the Africa Business Angel Network. That's the angel group of angel groups across Africa. I would say that they're a little more tuned to making money than having impact. So what, I've, what I see when I talk to investors in this corner is that they want to have impact. They use impact as a screen. If the deal doesn't have impact, it doesn't get done, but once they're through that, they want to make as much money as possible, right? And the, and the 2x returns are not high enough. They want 4x, 5x, 10x returns or higher. Uh, and another good example of this is uh, IX Invests. Uh, this is a company that was founded by the grandson of Warren Buffett. It is aiming to be the Berkshire Hathaway of impact. Uh, got started a few years back. Long way to go until they're that big. Uh, but they're trying to make as much money possible while cleaning the environment and having good social goods. But they definitely are not compromising on returns. 